The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of Take Shape for Life health coaches or clients. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a physician before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Take Shape for Life team. Welcome to Take Shape for Life's Habits of Health webinar. My name is Craig Blanchett, and I'm a certified health coach with Take Shape for Life. And really, it's my pleasure to host this meeting uh, for you today. Um, if this is your first time joining the Habits of Health webinar, a special welcome to you. Uh, this webinar is for all clients, coaches, health professionals, and, and you know anyone that's really interested in improving their health. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking a little bit about optimal health and how we create it. And so we want to make sure you all feel warmly welcomed. You may hear content geared to those in the weight loss phase of their health journey, those in transition, and for those in the optimization phase. Those people will be moving forward towards a lifetime of optimal health. Take Shape for Life offers excellent tools and support for weight loss, but we also have a lot to offer to anyone who is looking for better health in really any area of life. If you're in the weight loss phase, perhaps on our five-in-one structured fueling plan, please be sure to follow the guidelines that have been set up for you as and guided by your free health coach. This webinar is being recorded and it will be available on your health coach's co-branded website as well as well as the YouTube channel and podcast available with usually within 48 hours. Um, if you want to find it on YouTube, search for go to YouTube and search for Habits of Health Zoom. And if you want to find the podcast, which is audio only, open the podcast player of your choice. We recommend iTunes and just simply search for TSFL. You can also access video recordings at this, this link. It's bit.ly slash H-O-H playbacks. Again, that's bit.ly slash H-O-H playbacks. And then for those of you who are listening to the recording or the podcast, we're glad you've taken the time. Uh, we invite you to join us live next time to be part of the discussion. These Habits of Health support webinars are held every Wednesday evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit your health coach's co-branded website for the link. So tonight, I want to talk to you about our topic. Our topic is called Choice and Consequence. It's a package deal. And so it's super exciting. I want to um, I introduce a little bit of me. Myself, first, I want to show you just kind of a little before and after photo of me. This is, um, oof, boy, almost six and a half years ago. And you can see on those, uh, those two left photos, Things weren't uh, as healthy as I wanted them to be, for sure. And then uh, as things moved along, um, gotten quite a bit healthier. But it's actually my um, privilege to uh, yeah, introduce our, our guest. I have a guest speaker today with us. Her name is Charlene Green. Let me actually throw up her photo here. Here's Charlene's before picture. You can see her and Lee there. So welcome, Charlene. Well, thank you, Craig. It's so great to be with you today during this holiday season. And um, hey, throw that picture back up there for a minute. I want to talk about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. You bet. Hi, everybody. And, um, you know, it's been an amazing journey for me. It's actually been two years and four months, almost to the day since I started my journey to health. And I just look at these pictures and I see um, a woman that was, you know, on the move and making things happen, but tired. I, the before picture, I see that I was so tired. And you can see the zest and the energy as I moved forward on the joy. And I wanted to stop and pause it. I, I love that I'm wearing shorts. I didn't wear shorts for 10 years. So I couldn't find any that really fit my body. And um, I was just conscious, um, but always joyful. And so I love the transformation. Craig, thanks for putting that back up there. You betcha. You and I just want to share with you guys, you know, what an amazing um, journey it is. Craig talked about in his introduction, um, a, a lifetime of optimal health. And I was laughing, thinking to myself that I never even knew that was possible or what that looked like. We don't know what we don't know. And when I reached out to my um, coach, my friend, I found out about the program kind of through the grapevine that it involved weight loss. And I had just been to Hawaii and saw my pictures and, 
and knew that um, I was looking for more than weight loss. I was looking for um, energy. I was looking for vibrancy and I was looking to age beautifully as my mom had just had a stroke. And I wanted to avoid some of those pitfalls. And it's interesting what wakes us up in our life, but whatever the reason, it doesn't really matter um, what started the process. It's that you're on the journey. And I'm sure most of you on here are clients. You might have been on here for some reason, someone invited you and you're looking at our program. Whatever the case, we're so excited today on this really important topic, choice and consequence. Um, it's a package deal. Um, and I wanna just flip it a little and say uh, our choice and reward which one are you going to go after? And so Craig, let's unpack this topic together today. Thanks for asking me with you. You, you bet. You bet. Yeah. Kind of the idea is, is uh, came to my mind a while and, and I love what you said because it's choice and consequence or choice and reward. Right. And it really depends. It's a package deal either way. And so if you think about it, um, we get to these, here's sort of the concept. You get to a, a decision in our, in your life and usually we have we see the thing that's immediate the thing that's right in front of us that we that we want and like let's say it's a christmas i don't know kind of a, a interesting event that's coming up and so we see the christmas holiday that comes it's coming ahead of us and then we get to that holiday and then we we eat certain things and we drink certain things and we we sort of have certain activities that we do and then the next morning or even maybe the next hour, we have a certain way that we feel based upon what the choices we just made. And so in my mind is trying to figure out if I always know that this eating healthy, spending time with my lean and green and taking good care of myself leads to feeling awesome, it's a package deal. So if I can think about how do I want to feel afterwards, that's the point. And if I make choices that maybe don't serve me well, I always feel cruddy. And so it's trying to, trying to figure out how to think about how I'm going to feel after my choice and let that influence the decision I'm trying to make. So um, that's kind of the big um, concept. I don't know, do you have um, some thoughts around that? that you know, Craig, I do, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, um, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know before I started this journey. I didn't know what energy could really be like. I didn't know what quality sleep could feel like, where I felt like a kid like falling asleep naturally. I was stay up late girl and do all that stuff. I didn't know you could, your body could just go to sleep naturally and wake up before your alarm clock. I didn't know that stuff. And so this is really a topic that's about awareness. And so, you know, wherever you are on the journey, I'm sure your awareness has been heightened. So now as you're more aware, you can think through the process a little bit of, um, it's not about being perfect. It's about beginning to be connected to what Craig just said. If I do this, is it going to give me what I really want? Which then you have to stop and think about what do I really want? Which goes to Dr. Ray's theme of what matters most. And, you know, sometimes um, when we're talking about what we're putting into our mouth, fueling our bodies, um, especially during the holiday season, how many of you do a lot of Christmas parties? I'm going one today. I'm dressed up for a holiday party. Plus, I just wanted to remind you guys to dazzle yourself with awareness this week and, and as we finish the year, you know, dazzle yourself. And plus I'm a little bit of a blingy person, personality. Yeah. I really just want us to just make the connection of celebrating that you are becoming more aware. Congratulations, congratulations on being on this Zoom because you're actually connecting even to a higher level of, oh, think through the process instead of mindlessly eating, mindlessly living, mindlessly just going through the day. And you're always gonna get the consequence or the reward regardless of whether you were connected or not, but what if you could actually have the power of choice harnessed? So Craig, I have a lot of excitement about this topic. Yeah, I, I can see, and I do too. This is, this is actually great. One of the things that we talked about as you were just, as you were uh, sharing there, is the, the concept of um, uh, what, what matters most and really, if you will, aiming at the thing um, so I've heard some people call them ultimates, right? There, there's, there's these immediates and there's the ultimates, right? Or there's the, the thing that you want now versus the thing that you want most. And so in order to, in order to really understand the package deal, I think we, um, there are some things that we can set ourselves up to either, we can set ourselves up to sabotage ourselves 
or we can set ourselves up to really, really for success. And so there's some skills that will that will develop. And I'm gonna, Dr. A has the his chapter three, uh, chapter three in his book. It's motivation for change. And um, I, I know you have a story here. I'm going to ask you to tell here about your cookie story. But um, it, the kind of the concept you need to ask yourself is when I do this, and that could be a good thing, by the way. When I do this, I always get that. And so the question that, that I, we all need to ask ourselves is, do I want that? And so you have a, a fun little story. Your cookie story is what we call it. And I want, I'd love for you to share that with the gang. Absolutely, Craig. And I want to say that this book that you were just talking about, chapter three in this book, was the turnaround for me um, on the triggers, you know. And so, yeah, cookies. Let's talk about cookies for a minute. Um, so growing up, I um, loved the time with my mom, family of five kids, um, loved getting time alone with my mom or quality time. She's a busy lady. And every day after school, we lived in this little small town and we'd walk down the hill home and she would have on the counter, you know, it was harvest um, gold and um, orange countertop because it was in the 70s and 80s. She would have the little glasses, eight ounce glasses of milk and she would always have fresh baked cookies, usually oatmeal or oatmeal with chocolate chip. Those are still my favorite to this day because they represented a feeling of connection. And she would have them there. We'd come in the door. She'd sit down with us at the little bar stools and ask us about our day. And she'd serve us these little cookies, you know, two or three. It was like we had so many or anything. Um, they were tiny. And the milk. So it represented comfort, um, connection, love, um, just great feelings every day after school. Pretty much every day my mom had that ready. So as life went on, um, I would always bake when I wanted comfort, joy, or love. So that covered a whole bunch of emotions. If I was happy, I wanted to bake cookies. If I was sad, I wanted comfort and love and joy. And as I read chapter three in this amazing book, this has been a big key to the lasting change for health. It's really the psychological piece that I'm talking about. Well, you know, here I am. I'm married to wonderful Lee Green. We're having our fourth wedding anniversary this year. Started my journey two years ago. And our first years of marriage, like, Honey, why are you baking so much? Why are you baking cookies? And I'm like, I'm not baking a lot. You know, it didn't even seem like it to me. I did not have the awareness or the connection. And so as I read that chapter, um, about a month into my health journey, chapter three triggers, and Dr. Anderson explained that um, it actually was about cookies, funny. And he said, it's not that you just sat down and randomly ate a bag of cookies. It starts way back when you clip the coupon to buy the cookies blah, blah, blah. So meaning cause and effect, what we're talking about, the package deal. And as he went through the triggers part of it, I realized as I did the worksheet in there that making cookies was an emotional thing for me. And it was, that was the way that I fed the emotional part. See, we're either feeding our body for fuel because we need energy or we're feeding our emotions. And so it was really a big deal for me to make that connection and realize that I had to replace that behavior. And um, I had to have a new structure in place of other activities. And I actually made a list, Craig, of things that I would do instead of make cookies. You know, go for a walk, take a bubble bath, um, read a great chapter of a book that I love that was motivational, call a friend and see if we can meet up, um, you know, drink some sparkling water in a wine glass because it's pretty. I mean, you know, there was just lots of different things that I made and I had a list of 10 things and I would go to those behaviors instead because what I wanted was to feel and celebrate or comfort myself, but I didn't want the effect that the cookies gave me. I didn't want that anymore. Yeah. I got clear. Totally clear. That makes complete sense. I think a couple of things that come to, to came to my mind sort of in unpacking this experience that, that I know you, I'm, I'm aware of what, because I, I'm this, I've had that same experience. I think a lot of us have. But here's, here's one thing that I've noticed, and I'm, I'm curious about if you notice this as well, is the, it seems like the intensity of wanting those cookies is, is really strong, but not, but it's fleeting. It seems like it's intense, but if I can sort of, if I can get through three minutes of something else, I have, it's just, a, I'm in a different place. What's, what's your experience been to sort of weather the storm of the, of the intensity of the, of the moment? Greg, I think that's such a great question because there's two pieces. You, you can, you need to delay your reaction for a minute, but that's not going to do the trick. 
completely. You delay it so you can get clear. You can do what is in chapter three, stop, challenge, choose. You've probably heard this before, or maybe you haven't heard it. Stop what you're doing. Take a big breath. Challenge yourself to ask yourself the question, what's going on here? What do I really want? So for instance, if you're wanting to eat something, am I thirsty? Am I tired? You know, because whether you're on program of five and one or the other program, which is just optimizing your health, what do you really want? What's going on with you? So you start to make the connection. So for me, it would look like this. Stop. Take a breath. Okay. What's going on with me? Why do I want to bake cookies right now? Or why do I want to eat something sweet? You know, but mostly it was baking. Um, gosh, I've had a tough day. I had a stressful situation just happen. I think I need to do some deep breathing and I want to feel better. So I'm going to actually relax. I've got 20 minutes. I'm going to go up and soak my feet in the tub and um, read this part of the magazine. I keep some great magazines that are kind of like, I can read a few pages that are inspirational. I think I'll do that instead of baking because actually it's not going to be satisfying when I eat those cookies. I'm going to feel um, really tired, lethargic, and um, I'm not going to like the outcome. So if, and then you make the choice. And the choice sometimes is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bake a cookie. I'm going to bake cookies. And then you deal with the consequence. And then you have to aftermath go, is that really what I wanted? And then you adjust your course. So see, it's not about perfection. It's not about never doing something. Sometimes you have to do it to learn it. Yeah. But it's stop, challenge, choose. Yep. And I, when, I, when I heard the stop, challenge, choose, and this may be something so trivial, but it wasn't for me, the stop, challenge, choose words came in such short succession that it was, and this is how it really works for me. It's stop, take three breaths. And, and I always feel before I breathe, before I do my breathing, it's going to be stupid. I don't know why, but I just think this is dumb. It's a waste of time. And every time I do it, by the end of that third or fourth breath, I'm like so happy. I mean, I'm in such a different place. And you actually you actually wash your brain with um, what I call superpower, superpower chemicals. <laughs> and it actually can change your, your, your chemistry of your brain with, those, with that conscious breathing. So it's stop, breathe, challenge. Now you're challenging it with some more vigor and some more context to what you want, the package deal, if you will. And then you make your choice. And I know I, I heard someone say recently, sometimes I choose the cookie. And you just said that. But, but hopefully we choose the cookie less without challenging it. If we can challenge it, I think we're, we're you know, we're going to be in a better place over time. And that actually, that leads me to the next thing is this concept of, of awareness. And so I'd like you to talk a little bit about awareness without judgment and kind of how that unpacks. Uh, absolutely. Um, this is so important, you guys, because this, I'd like to talk about that and also structure because we set ourselves up for success or failure of what we actually want most um, with the structure that's in place. And so I'd love to tell a story about um, walking down the road. And I've loved this story for over a decade and um, it's just great because it's really a metaphor for your life. So it goes like this. Um, I'm walking down the road. I fall. I hit the bottom of a dark, big hole. What happened to me? I'm scared. And I stay there for a long time. Next day, I'm walking down the road. I fall. I fell in that dumb hole again. I can't believe I fell in that hole. It's not my fault. Somebody help me. Day three. I walk down the road. I fall on the hole. I can't believe this happened again, but I take responsibility and I get myself out immediately. I crawl out of the hole. Day four, I walk down the road. I see the hole. I walk around the hole and I don't fall in. Day five, I walk down a new road without a hole. And I just love that story because it represents so much. And so I want to tie that back for a minute, Craig, into, um, you know, that's, that's been the case for me for so much of my life. But when I found this program, it was really like I got to walk down a new road. And it's been two years since I've been healthy now. I got healthy right before Christmas two years ago, lost that 65 pounds ultimately. And, you know, I have like a five pound window for me that I don't want to go above. But it's really not the weight. It's I want to keep the energy. I want to keep the vibrancy. I want to keep my habits of sleep. I want to keep the emotional stability that feeling my body right brings me. 
So for two years, I knew that I, the road I couldn't walk down was keeping baking items in my house because I would inevitably really want that old feeling would come up and it would be so handy. You know, I, I've still baked things, but I had to go and borrow it or get it and then get rid of it again. It, it couldn't stay in my house because then I'm back on that road again. Um, and I'll call it the chocolate chip cookie road. And it's been interesting. This season, I found myself um, getting a little more lax. And all of a sudden, we had baked items in here. And I baked cookies a couple times. And I realized I found myself eating them because you never want to put yourself in the position where it's all willpower. You always want to put yourself in the position where you have the why power and the structure to support the behavior that you want. So I had to just re kind of energize myself and stop challenge twos and get those items out of my house. Not because I can't have cookies. It's just if I bake them, I eat a lot of cookies. And so my structure is if I really want a cookie and I stop challenge twos, I'll go buy a cookie at a bakery. One, <laughs> one cookie instead of three dozen on my counter. So, you know, what road do you want to walk down? That's a new road for yourself. What behaviors do you need to adjust? Um, with structure to support it because you find yourself falling down in that hole again and we all have our triggers go back and read chapter three is my recommendation we all have our patterns that we fall into but you know what it's really about um, getting clear and then asking yourself do I want this or do I want that and thinking ahead enough to go oh and this is setting me up for what you want or what you don't want so I hope that's kind of the direction we were heading Craig yeah, no, it is. Yeah, no, those, I love that story, walking down the road. It, and that, that will percolate, I think, in our minds for a little while. And so, so let's just break this down super basic, simple for people that are uh, listening or watching. Um, is what is it for you? What, what is the shift that you're going to have to make? Just like Charlene, when you're at the grocery store and you walk by the chocolate chips, I, I know, does something inside you go, well, no. I mean, right? I, I could, but if they're here, I can't make them into cookies because they're here at the store. If they're in my pantry, I could make them into cookies. And so you do your stop challenge choose when you're at the grocery store. That's right, Craig, because I think about what I want most. Yeah, what you want most. So as you're walking down those aisles, if, if um, and here's something I hear from people sometimes. They say, oh, well, this is for the grandkids. Or, oh, this is for the side. Oh, this, oh, I'll buy this because they like some treats, right? And so just think about yourself. And I would say, take a breath and, and a moment and say, are you, is that true? Are you, are you being honest with yourself? Are you being connected? You know, because um, maybe the grandkids don't come around but once a year, you know, but you always have cookies. I don't know. So just think about that. Whatever it is, let's break this down into something that's real and relevant to you. And then what if cookies had to go for you to feel great? By the way, feeling great is awesome. <laughs> Don't, I mean, it's not like- and It trumps everything, Craig. And you know, I wanna say to you guys, if you fall in the hole, whatever that is for you, you know, whatever your thing is, remember, dust yourself off, um, get out, and you've still got a whole day ahead of you. You know, if I ever um, am on the road and I do something, I go, oh, that didn't make me feel good at all. Because when you're healthy, your body tells you immediately, no, <laughs> that's not working for me. Adjust your sales. You still have either four or five fueling stuff of the day or one or two, whatever. Adjust your sales. Get back in the saddle. Practice your habits of health. Are you eating every two and a half to three hours? Are you fueling well? Um, do you have meal replacements if you're doing some of those fuelings in your purse or, or your jacket or whatever if you're a guy? I know you don't have a purse. Um, are you drinking water? You know, throughout the day, um, are you clear about those are the, that's the structure that's going to set you up to dust yourself off and don't throw the towel in for the day and go, well, I might as well just, which kind of happens during the holidays for some people, pull it back together. Every choice that we make moves us forward towards what we want most or backwards towards something we don't. So just keep progressing. Yeah. So here's the question often do we ask when I'm, when I'm walking down the road and I realize that I'm not where I want to be. So that's that awareness. I can, I can choose to be, stay judgmental about myself and say, oh, I'm here. Ah, I don't like here. But as, uh, what I would recommend is, is when you're aware that you're there, you can say, do I want to be here? And then uh, someone said, uh, Dr. A, I think he said one time, how soon do we have to wait 
before we can get back on track. Some people, it's Monday. Some people, it's the next morning. Some people, it's the next meal. And Dr. A said, it could be crazy. It could be the next bite. If you're aware that that last bite was in the hole, you can choose to get out of the hole on the next bite. So it really just depends on when you become aware, not to judge yourself that you're off track, but then to choose, do I want to be here? How is it here? Do I want to be here? So this actually um, uh, kind of brings up with sort of our, where do we go from here? We got the holidays coming up here, you know, in just a few days, um, Christmas holiday, and then we got New Year's and all that. And so um, I want to encourage you to, to get clear on what you want. And in a couple of uh, ways, you may be killing it, like totally nailing this program. And you're going to see people that you haven't seen in 12 months. They're going to come around Christmas, right? So think about what would it look like to team up with somebody that's where they are, where you were at before you began, right? So think about their mindset. They're going, Ooh, well, I hope it makes these holidays. What's going to happen? January. January is going to be the day. January, January, right? And you're now in this totally different place. So your perspective is like, man, I'm feeling good. This is a healthy holiday, right? So, so who could you possibly team up with that as a, as a partnership, they can encourage your goals and you can encourage their goals and together you can become stronger. And as we're closing, thank you so much, Charlene, for your time today. It's, it's a, such a pleasure to have you as a guest here and all your wisdom and knowledge and your experiences. So thank you for that. Thank you, Craig, for having me. And I just want to say on Craig's dare, it's not going to be like the Christmas story where Ralphie puts his tongue on the pole. That's and right. Don't do that. <laughs> not that kind of a dare. It's an awesome dare. So take it, um, implement it. I just want to congratulate you again on um, moving your health forward. And um, be good to yourself. Because it's not about judgment, condemnation, anything like that. It's about celebrating what you're doing right now. And if you don't like what you're doing, change it. Yeah, exactly. So there's, a, there's as I'm closing here, the... Um, that sense of fulfillment when you wake up the next morning and you guys know what I'm talking about and you wake up the next morning and you go nailed it. Yes. Took care of me. Yeah. What's up. Right. That is something you earn and you earn by focusing on what you want. So it might feel like a, a little bit of weight, but it should. Because that's when things are really fulfilling, usually there's a little bit of earning to it. So just think about yourself. How do I want to wake up tomorrow morning? Do I want to go nailed it? Or I'm going to go, ooh, yeah, not so good. Think about it. How does, how does the taste, that satisfaction feel or taste that next morning? And I know you know what I'm talking about when you just nailed it, right? So I encourage you, take my, uh, I challenge you with the dare. I encourage you with your health, um, and uh, I want to thank Charlene again, and I want to thank you all for, um, you may not realize this, but you guys are all part of my community too. I'm still working on my health, Charlene. You're part of Charlene's community, and so as we continue to practice these things and focus on these things, we are all stronger. So um, Merry Christmas, um, Happy New Year, all those kinds of, um, of uh, blessings to you. And uh, we will see you next time on the Habits of Health webinar. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. The preceding audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Take Shape for Life health coaches or clients. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants, and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a physician before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Take Shape for Life team.